Anything else? Microsoft Windows has multiple options, starting from Windows 95. Anyone heard about that? Yes. And now we have come to what is the latest? Vista. So we need to find a list of all operating systems that you can get. All what we are talking about now is our laptop or a desktop. Are there any other places where you heard about operating systems? We have handheld devices which use operating system like Android and iPhone which also has an operating system. Blackberry also has an operating system. Palm also has an operating system and I can go with this list which is endless. So all these systems have operating systems, right? And we need to get a collection or at least a fair understanding of the available operating systems. And make sure when you write the list of operating systems as an answer to this, classify it that this is for desktop, this is for handheld devices, and these are for mobile devices. iPad, that's another big word now. iPhone, another big word. Droid platform, another big word. Android operating system, right? So. What we are looking at is the platform. So the platform is basically the aspect on which you are running your application. There are various application services, uh, various operating system providers. Microsoft is one, then Sun. Anyone heard about Sun? Sun Microsystems, very good. But now Sun Microsystems has been overtaken by whom? Oracle? There you go. Okay. So Oracle has bought over Sun. It is under the same umbrella now. What is the operating system that Sun offers? Everyone I knows about... Sorry, what was that? I didn't get your question. My question is, Sun Microsystems offers a platform. What is the name of that Java. platform? Java is the technology on which you can build applications. Java is not an operating system. Okay. The Sun provides you a Solaris platform, Sun Solaris, which is okay. a variant of a Microsoft competitor, Unix. Anyone heard about Unix? Yes. Mm -hmm. so Unix is one platform, Microsoft is one platform. On Unix there are various service providers. Unix is an open source system which has been configured by various vendors. Sun, when they configured the open source Unix to suit their needs, they called it Solaris. Is it outdated or it's still... Oh, it's very much prevalent now as well. Lot of organizations, you'll be surprised, are on Unix. Right? Okay. And it could be a variant. Sun provides you Unix. HP, IBM also provide you Unix, but they provide their own flavors. Then there is Linux. So the world of platforms that you have comprises of Microsoft, which is a big word, yeah. then non-Microsoft. Under non-Microsoft we have Unix and Linux. Of course, there is Mac world as well now. Right? Mm -hmm. So when you go and do this research, you'll find a lot of other operating systems as well. So that's your backbone on which you start working on your computer sitting at home. When you're trying to access the internet, what happens? Let's say, let's take a big exa example of trying to access uh, 1-800-Flowers. So when you're sitting at home, you're trying to access 1-800-Flowers website from your home, what do you do? You open your computer, which is running a platform. Right? That platform is running on some hardware. That hardware is, there is a combination of a chip, Intel, blah, 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 with 2 GB RAM, 4 GB RAM on an operating system. Right? After that, what do you do? You have your application to be started. Which application to start? So you open the browser. The next question that we have is what are the various types of browsers that are available in market? 
Google Chrome, good example. Firefox, Firefox another good example. Internet Explorer. Yes, Internet Explorer. Anything else? MSN, Safari. MSN is uh, well. MSN actually has a lot of other options as well. It has MSN is a website. MSN also is a chat server. So I'm not sure where you're going with that. So browser is Internet Explorer, Chrome, Safari. Safari. Did you say Safari? I think you said Safari. So there is a combination yes. of a lot of browsers. So why do you have this in browser? Please. To view the web pages? To view the web pages, but then why do we have so many on them? And why did the browser change so much? Because I remember using Internet Explorer 6. And sometimes when I run that Internet Explorer 6 on a newly built application, it says your browser is compatible. Why does that happen? Upgrading it based on the technical advancement. Most important thing that I just mentioned, I don't know if that is intentionally or unintentionally, but it is a very important thing. It's the growth in the marketplace where technology changes to support the upgrade in technology. We have looked at Internet Explorer, Chrome, Firefox also upgrading. So as the technology becomes more and more sophisticated, we need the browsers to be more sophisticated, which is why you have gone from Internet Explorer 6 to Internet Explorer 9 now. Right? Because these newer browsers are with greater speed of delivery. They are more compatible to the latest technology because you have videos, flash, etc. that you can use, right? There are pop-ups that come up which are not allowed in the old versions of the browsers. So we need to understand the next question is not only what are the various types of browsers, what are the various versions of those browsers. The reason of this exercise is to understand the platform and the browsers that are required in our testing needs. Because when you are looking at an application, let's do a small exercise here. How do you access Google from your home? Let's walk it through. So first, of all, what do you do? You use a computer or do you use a laptop or a handheld? What do you do? Laptop. Okay, so let's say you're using a laptop. The laptop has Windows. Windows. Yeah. What version of Windows? XP? XP. So Windows XP, IE. Internet Explorer 6, 7, 8, 9, 9. nine. nine. So laptop, Windows Explorer, uh, sorry, Internet Explorer 9. What about you, Praveena? What do you use? I use laptop. Okay. Uh, Vista. Laptop Vista. Okay. And so from XP, we've gone to Vista. Yes. Okay. And Internet Explorer 9.0. Internet Explorer 9.0. Okay. Let's go on to the team members here. Diana, what do you use? And I'm not on phone, I think. Gopika, are you connected? Okay, let's go to Nupur. Uh, I use um, Windows um, Windows Explorer 9. So Windows, yeah. what version of Windows we use? Microsoft Windows. Are you using XP, yeah. XP Professional, XP, Vista, Long um, On? No, Windows XP. So Windows XP. What is the browser that you use? Uh, Internet Explorer. Internet Explorer version 9, 8, 7, 6, 9, 9, 9. 9 Ashish. So here we have three people who are using three different platforms, three different browsers, three different operating systems. So when you are looking at a public facing website, you need to support the testing of all these variants. That is why we are doing the exercise of understanding components of the architecture. Because my audience, when I am Google, I will expect people to work or come onto my website from so many combinations. They'll be using handheld, they'll be going on their iPhone to do google.com and do a search, they'll be on an Android handheld, they'll be on a laptop, they will be on several other mediums. So the reason why we are doing this is to understand that when we do testing, 
we need to understand what this supported platform needs. Because based on every platform that you add for testing, the time for testing grows. If you've tested on Windows XP and Internet Explorer 8 or 9, does not mean that on Windows 2000 it will work perfectly fine. You have to test on that as well. So that's why we're going through the exercise of various platforms, various internet or various browsers, and various versions. Okay. Next thing that we're looking at is the internet or the intranet. Anyone? You, you know what is the difference in internet and intranet? Internet can be accessed. Everywhere globally, intranet, um, in particular, uh, specific uh, groups of specific location. You're almost there. Yeah. You're almost there. Yeah. Anyone else who wants to take a stab at this? Internet is accessing yeah, worldwide, uh, 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 and the uh, intranet is uh, accessing. I mean, uh, only uh, they are connected to a network. Like uh, you know, uh, suppose uh, CTS. So suppose we take an example of a company called CTS. Then uh, all the computers are, are um, uh, you know, they are uh, connected in a network. Okay. For those who are not the for those who internet not is the worldwide yeah. internet is within the company or within an organization. Patient yes. information within the organization is intranet. Internet is like worldwide. the worldwide web. You know, intranet is just within an organization. Okay, um, I had requested to follow a standard. Please say your name first and then give your answer so that we know who is communicating with us. So, Pravina has some. Rekha here. Uh, Priya here. Good. Thank you, Priya. I believe internet is Pravina okay. and uh, I feel like internet, uh, even in the same company, some locations can't access based on the uh, you know, uh, restrictions uh, we have. So in client place, we can't access a regular internet site. There is a problem that it was weak. I'm just touching upon the point. Okay, so what she's trying to help us understand here is one, internet is worldwide web. You can access it from anywhere and everywhere. Which means it's open web. Can you access Google from anywhere in the world? Yes, you can. Can you access your Citibank account from anywhere in the world? Yes. Bank of America is open. ACS is open. Hotmail is open. Yahoo is open. Google dot mail dot Google dot com is open, right? Your Gmail account is accessible from everywhere. That's the internet part of it. What is internet? Internet is a restricted or controlled access based on user authentication. So what will happen? There is, let's take an example of City Financial Services. City Financial Services is offering you a city website, your city.com, your banking website. But within city, the corporate network of city, you cannot access that if you're not an employee. But have a different URL, the path to access. There would be user authentication that will be done. And then you'll be connected in the corporate network. Do you think everyone who is outside in the outside world, sitting outside coach, can access everything that's in the coach? No. Which means it is intranet within an organization. That organization could be as scaled or distributed all over the globe. Cognizant network. Cognizant HR. Is accessible to all cognizant employees who can access the cognizant system with their ID. That's your intranet. Right? We know what is internet, now we know what is intranet. There's another one called extra. Internet minus the intranet. Make sense? 